I mean, where do I even start? I want to make it very clear, right? Normally, hashtag, we like to take a super objective view. I'm going to be hyper reactional to how this game went. First half, not so much. We're going to be talking about the second half of that football game quite a bit. And it's probably going to be loud. And I, I, I'm not sure where or how this is going to go because we never cut videos like this. But there is a lot that we need to talk about from the second half of that Rams game versus the Buffalo Bills. And I, I don't even know where to start. Item number one, you're winning the game by 25 points. Your running back has 13 attempts. Devin Singletary, 13 attempts the whole game. 13 attempts the whole game. He's averaging 5.5 yards a carry. 5.5. You ran the ball 13 times of 20 of 25 points okay all right you know if it's not broke don't fix it right that was sort of the thing that happened in the miami game where you saw the bills start to get just a little comfortable and then you realize you know what we got to just keep we got to just keep doing what works and that was throwing the football okay let's keep throwing the football you look at josh allen's stat line 24 for 33 311 yards averaging 9.4 yards uh, a completion, you know, four touchdowns, right? One interception, that t- completely debatable. I don't even want to get into that yet, right? Looked great at halftime. Hadn't been sacked yet by halftime. Zero sacks. Jared Goff had been sacked twice at that point. Jared Goff finished with the exact same sack total. The Bills did not sack Jared Goff in the second half of this football game. You knew going in at halftime, we talked about it at the halftime show, here's a clip of of what the Bills were doing that I said they would probably continue to do not to freak out. Let the Rams try and beat them on the interior. Don't let the Rams try and run the football on the interior. Go ahead, right? If I had a DeLorean with a flux capacitor, I would have put myself in that vehicle powered by spite carrots and vegetables or whatever the hell Doc Brown shoved in the back end in the first 15 minutes of that Back to the Future movie. And I would have gone back to first half Paul and slapped the ever-loving life out of him because I was under complete assurance that just as long as we stayed calm, cool, and collected, Josh Allen, as I quoted, was very calm, cool, and collected in the first half. Here's a clip. Allen, on the other hand, looks cool, calm, and collected, right? Where he sees cool, calm, collected. That's it. And he's just picking things apart. There's no rush. There's no, there's no, you know, uh, you don't feel at any point in this game like Buffalo hasn't been in control. And this is where I get a little nervous, right? I get a little nervous once we start talking about what those third quarter pieces are going to look like coming offensive side, right? Josh Allen was none of that once that lead started to deteriorate. That interception happened, and slowly the onion started to be peeled back layer by painful, deep layer. And we didn't get Josh Allen with the three C's. We got Josh Allen with the three O's. Overwhelmed, overworking, and out of his mind. Out of his mind. The Rams started putting a lot of pressure once the Bills' offensive line started to break down, right? And as you start rotating players, and of course, you're moving guys out of position, not necessarily out of position, but out of position that they really practiced often, right? You move Cody Ford over to left guard. Now now we start seeing some trouble, right? And Aaron Donald just absolutely started smoking people, right? Aaron Donald became the Aaron Donald that you expected, and he just became a one-man animal on a mission to absolutely eat the souls of the people in front of him. And that's what happened, right? He is a one-man wrecking crew. Thank God we don't live in the West. Oh, my God, is Aaron Donald good at football, right? And he made the Bills' life very, very hard. Because instead of Josh Allen making adjustments, in the first half you saw Josh Allen making line adjustments, calling some audibles, 
Instead, it was like he got to a point where, okay, they're going to bring five. I'll just figure it out. And the the ability that he had to make time in the pocket that he, that he utilized to his advantage in the first half, the Rams took that away in the second half. And Allen was still trying to manufacture time in the pocket that just wasn't ever going to be there. And what did that translate to? Instead of him making adjustments and getting the ball out quick, it translated to him running backwards over and over and over again in some of the most terrifying Bills football I can remember in the last two decades. Now listen, I'm hyper invested into this team, right? But my heart rate's pounding like this. I'm Googling like yoga moves to try and calm my heart rate down so I don't have an, you know, an, you know, an aneurysm. And I, the whole time, the PTSD of the last 25 years is just hitting me going, all right, you know what? I have faith. I have faith in this little thing in the back of my head, just like everyone, all of you have. It's all in the back of my head, and I'm going, okay, my patience is, I'm starting to run out of options here. I'm starting to run out of options here. You're up 25 points. It's okay. The score touchdown, no biggie. You expect him to run down the football field. Nice play by Wood. Score that touchdown. Okay, all right. We're still okay. We're still fine. Plenty of time to score more points. No problem. Plenty of time. It just kept getting worse, right? Finally got Beasley involved in the offense. Six receptions, 100 yards. Glad to see Beasley in. That was where you needed to abuse this team was inside with the linebackers, right? Their cornerbacks are just too good to be able to dominate on them on the outside. You lose John Brown. Gabe Davis makes a big step forward in the first half. He was a big pivotal part, and they locked him out in the second half of that football game. They locked him right out, right? So Cole Beasley steps up, does a great job for you, right? The sacks. Guys, the sacks. Allen was sacked four times in the in the second half, and it felt like eight. He's super athletic, right? But once he felt he had to take over the game and got outside of the game plan, things went from bad to worse. I don't know what that backwards pass to McKenzie was supposed to be, but that is a type of football that was reminiscent of the Houston game that I thought I had drank away in my life, but apparently not. I had hoped that that game, the Houston game, had shown him, you need to put the cape away. You need to take what's there, right? He didn't take what was there at all this game, right? Instead of being able to move pieces around to get where they needed to go, they're walking through scripted motions that's, that are all as part of the play, and he's not... He's not looking what the defense is giving him anymore. He's trying to make something that isn't there. And in the first half, he was able to do that. Had time, was able to manipulate, manipulate the pocket. Receivers would eventually get open against that secondary. This was a game they should have been able to run the football. Singletary was devastating with the football in his hands. 13 rushing attempts. Can't win like that. Can't win like that. You had the opportunity to shorten up this game and and you didn't take it. So I'm frustrated. I'm really, really frustrated. And I have a ton of faith in the process, so I don't want you to think that I don't. But, holy, holy. I don't, I don't know what to say. I needed this game to go well. I didn't need this game to shave years off my life. And I feel like that's where I ended up, was that this game shaved whole years off of my life. The horse collar on Allen on the sack. I, the replay, I didn't get a great look at it. So I can't really be critical about that. But the one thing I can be critical about is Allen calling for the horse collar while the ball's still on the ground, right? You want to complain about that after a play, you go right ahead. But I don't need to see that while while the ball's still, you know, tips it around on the ground. If you fumble the football and you're pretty confident you fumble the football, you go you go you go get that football and you you bark at the refs later. You get teed up for being mad at the refs, I'm not bothered by that. I don't care. He's the leader of that football team. He gets frustrated. He gets teed up because, you know, he's mad. All right. Okay. I think he had a reason to be mad if he felt like, you know, uh, like he like somebody had their fingers underneath his shoulder pad. I understand that. There's rules against that. But you can't play for the call. Can't you can't you can't play for the call. Right? And I've seen him do that the last couple of years where that has happened and he plays for the call a little bit 
and and that frustrates me uh, immensely because I remember Brady doing the same thing inside this division for years, and I know it's hard not to look up to Tom Brady if you're a budding quarterback, if you're just looking at how to play the football, uh, how to play the game of football. I mean, it's really hard not to look up at Tom Brady, right? But Brady does exactly that, and I saw Josh Allen do it, and and the acid in my stomach started to seep through uh, my actual my uh, my actual chest cavity. The call to end the game. I give Allen a lot of credit for throwing the football that direction. Had he not thrown the football that direction at that time, that call might not have been made. Bills got lucky. Bills got real lucky. We can complain about the interception all day long. I still don't understand it, right? I, I don't get it. Um, I don't I don't get how that call is made. E- either way you cut it, first interception for Allen and that was really just the catalyst for how things started to spiral out of control from there and I don't know if he felt like he had something to prove after that or that he, he had to will the team back to victory even though they were, are, they were still up a bunch um, uh, Josh Allen knowing that he has to buy himself time in the pocket is not something I'm interested in from Josh Allen I want Josh Allen the quarterback I don't want Josh Allen the let me see what I can do here quarterback uh, that's not what I want. I want him to be able to see what's in front of him, understand the pressure packages, understand his checks, and utilize his legs when he needs to, not not run for survival like he was choosing to do a lot of those snaps. He he stopped moving cover, he stopped moving line protections to where they needed to be. He started he stopped paying attention to personnel across the defensive line. He stopped paying attention to some things that you just can't lose focus on. And it just it seemed like he got caught up. And that concerns me, right? I mean, I thought my biggest concern in this game was the fact that Lee Smith caught a touchdown pass. I really thought that was the biggest concern I had because on your 2020 apocalypse bingo, Lee Smith catching a touchdown pass, uh, I'm sure was on a few people's. Like, it's one of the signs of the four horsemen, right? That Lee Smith catches a one-yard touchdown pass. But it happened. And crazier things in this world have happened, I suppose. But the fact still remains that what I saw was scary football to me, right? It, it was scary football. And the Bills had an opportunity to control the game, and, and they proceeded to slowly lose focus from that. And I understand injuries and personnel, things get shifted, and you have to change your game plan. But trying to, trying to buy yourself more time in the pocket as you start swapping in and out offensive player, offensive linemen, that, that's not the right path. The best thing you can do is get the ball out quick. That helps that offensive line, right? Get the ball out quick. And that's not the path that Allen chose. Allen kept trying to buy himself time, which was so successful in the first half, that simply the Rams were just going to take away. And that, that was a product of the offense not making the adjustment and Allen not getting the right direction from upstairs. And, and that concerns me. People can talk about Brian Dable being the MVP all they want. They can talk about Josh Allen being MVP all they want. But if Dable couldn't see that Allen was trying to buy himself time that wasn't there because he stopped making his checks, then I don't know what to tell you. It's a learning opportunity. And it, that's what it should remain. It should be a learning opportunity. And if this ever happens again, I'm going to go need to talk to somebody. Like, this is this is crazy. The, the Bills are 3-0. and I'm thrilled the Bills are 3-0. and But holy hell. That was a scary ride. That was a scary ride. Every week? Don't make me do this every week. Come on, give me a layup here and again. You know, like, I thought this was going to be it. Like, the first half, we were looking good. I thought I thought this was going to be it. Just run it out. They'll run the football because it's all you're going to let them do. The game's going to get short in the second half because both teams are just going to run the football. Life's going to be good. Bills are going to walk away with this one. They'll win 30 to 20, you know, 30 to, to 14, 30 to 18, because right? they, they had three at the end of the half. They scored 29 points in the second half of this football game. 29. The Bills were up 25. I can't. Guys, you got to stop doing this to me. Like, you got to stop. I love you. I do. I love you. But the PTSD from the last 25 years does not make me welcome such football games as this. That was rough.